chemical reactions can be explosive, but most substances do not react with each other instantaneously. Most reactions require the input of some amount of energy, called activation energy, in order to get started. For cells, this would be a big problem. Without enzymes, cells would essentially be stuck waiting hundreds or thousands of years for certain biochemical reactions to take place. So, exactly how do enzymes lower the activation energy of a reaction? This question will definitely be on the AP test in one form or another. So stick with us as we cover everything you need to know about enzyme catalysis. This video covers section 3.2 of the AP Biology curriculum, focusing on how enzymes catalyze reactions and affect their rate. To begin, we'll look at all the basics of chemical reactions and how they function without enzymes. Then, we'll see how enzymes change the energetic profile of a reaction as a biological catalyst. After the quiz, we'll see how the physical and chemical properties of enzymes actually lower the amount of activation energy required. Finally, we'll see how enzymes operate in the context of endothermic and exothermic reactions. If you only need to review one of these topics, feel free to skip forward to the times outlined here. Otherwise, let's get started. Before we can understand how an enzyme works or why they are a necessary part of cells, we have to understand how a typical chemical reaction takes place. Since nearly every reaction in biology takes place in an aqueous environment, let's consider what is happening at the molecular level in a solution. In an aqueous solution, there are trillions and trillions of water molecules all moving and pulling each other around. If we add two reactants to this solution, they will not immediately react with one another. First, the two molecules have to find each other. Given that water molecules are dragging them around, this is no easy task. Second, the two molecules actually have to run into each other in the exact right position. If not, they may just bounce off one another. Finally, they have to be moving with enough speed and in the right direction to actually push the molecules together and encourage the reaction to happen. Only then will a reaction actually occur. Together, all of these processes are known as activation energy. In a lab, we can supply the necessary activation energy by increasing the temperature, increasing the number of reactant molecules in the solution, or even by electrifying the solution. All of these methods increase the chances of two reactant molecules hitting at just the right speed and angle. However, cells do not have these advanced laboratory techniques and have to rely on enzymes. Enzymes provide the activation energy necessary for important biological reactions to happen in a timely manner. A catalyst is any substance that speeds up the rate of a reaction, most commonly by providing the necessary activation energy for a reaction to take place. A biological catalyst, also known as an enzyme, is a protein or RNA molecule with the ability to lower the activation energy required for a specific reaction. Let's take a closer look. Consider a reaction where a large macromolecule is breaking down into smaller components or monomers. Since the covalent bonds between monomers are very strong, this reaction requires quite a bit of activation energy before the reaction will start taking place. Without a catalyst, this reactant would require high temperatures or a very long time before the conditions were just right and there was enough energy supplied for the reaction to happen. Cells don't have the patience for this. So, over billions of years of evolution, cells have created the perfect biological machines to speed up and control important biochemical reactions. Enzymes grab the reactant, supply a bit of energy, and greatly reduce the activation energy needed for a given reaction to take place. Enzymes are considered a catalyst and not a reactant of any sort for a couple of reasons. First, if we looked at, look at the product of a reaction, we can see that there is no difference in free energy between an enzyme-catalyzed reaction and a reaction that takes place without an enzyme. In other words, the product ends up with the same amount of energy with both methods. 
The change in Gibbs free energy, denoted delta G, is the same in both reactions. This means that the same amount of energy was released in the overall reaction. This shows us that the enzyme did not donate matter or energy to the reactants or products. It simply lowered the amount of energy the reactants needed to get started. Let's take a break from the complexities and do a quick thought experiment to help visualize how enzymes actually work to change the rate of reaction. Let's pretend that these 20 toothpicks are substrate molecules, and your fingers are an enzyme that has evolved to break toothpicks in half. Without looking at the toothpicks, you reach down, find an unbroken toothpick, and break the toothpick in half. If you do this for a minute and graph the results, you can see exactly how an enzyme works in a solution full of substrate. At zero seconds, there are zero broken toothpicks, but you jump right into your work and your fingers can easily find unbroken toothpicks. For a while, your work is easy and goes quickly because you can easily encounter a whole toothpick each time you reach down. Then, as you start to run out of unbroken toothpicks, your work slows. It takes your fingers longer to seek out the unbroken toothpicks, and the rate of your enzyme decreases. Eventually, you run out of toothpicks to break, and the rate of new products completely flattens out. This is exactly how most enzymes work in solution. They work very quickly until they have entirely run out of substrate molecules to convert into products. Now that we have covered the basics of chemical reactions and have seen how biological catalysts lower the activation energy needed for reactions to occur, let's see if you are following along. Pause the video now and try to answer these AP style questions. You can find detailed answers to all of the questions through the quick test prep link in this video's description. So, we just finished covering what enzymes do in a biological reaction. Now, let's take a look at how enzymes actually lower activation energy requirements. In an outdated model of enzyme function, called the lock and key model, a substrate would enter the active site, and if it fits, a reaction magically happened. If the incorrect substrate tried to enter the enzyme, the enzyme would not function and no reaction would take place. However, this model fails to explain exactly how the enzyme actually lowers the activation energy required. The model that better explains how an enzyme actually reduces the activation energy required for a reaction to take place is called the induced fit model. This model starts with the same premise, that the substrate and active site must have a similar shape and chemical properties that cause an attraction. In this model, however, the substrate is not the exact perfect size, shape, or charge for the active site. As the substrate is attracted into the active site, the entire enzyme must slightly change shape to accommodate the substrate. This change of shape perfectly orients and applies pressures to the substrate, making a reaction much more likely. Let's take a look at how this works in two different ways. Consider an enzyme that is involved in a catabolic reaction that is breaking a substrate into smaller pieces. As the single substrate molecule binds with the enzyme, the enzyme changes shape and puts stress on a particular bond within the substrate molecule. This stress makes the bond much more likely to break, leading to the exact reaction that the enzyme is supposed to facilitate. In an anabolic reaction that is combining two substrates into a single molecule, the opposite happens. As substrates bind to the enzyme, the enzyme changes shape to force the two molecules together. This lowers the activation energy required because the molecules are literally forced together by the enzyme and do not need to collide at the right velocity and orientation. So, enzymes essentially reduce the activation energy required for reactions to take place by perfectly positioning substrate molecules and changing shape slightly to apply pressure where it is needed. Is your brain starting to move at the speed of a sloth? Don't worry, we're almost finished here. Pause the video and take a minute to stretch your legs, grab some water, and eat a small snack. This should give you the energy you need to get through our final section on how enzymes can facilitate different kinds of reactions. As we saw previously, enzymes can complete both catabolic and anabolic reactions. 
Since catabolic reactions break bonds, they most often release energy. Anabolic reactions typically require energy because these reactions are forming bonds. Reactions that release energy are exothermic, while reactions that require energy from the environment are called endothermic. This concept sometimes confuses students on the AP test because it would seem that if a reaction released energy, no activation energy would be required in order for a reaction to start. But this is a misconception. Think of an exothermic reaction like a bomb. Though a ton of energy is released when the bomb goes off, it still needs an initial spark, like a lit fuse, to overcome the initial activation energy required. In most exothermic reactions in the body, this fuse is an enzyme. Once the lowered activation energy threshold is met, the reaction can release energy, much like the bomb exploding and releasing energy. Likewise, students sometimes confuse activation energy with the overall energy change in a reaction. If the products of a reaction are at a higher energy level than the reactants, you may be tempted to add both the activation energy and the difference between products and reactants to find the overall energy change. But the overall energy change is only the difference between the reactants and products. The activation energy can easily be lowered by using an enzyme and the overall change in energy will remain the same. This is important because it shows that enzymes are not doing much more than bringing the chemicals together, putting them in the right position, and stressing the formation or breakdown of the right bonds. Otherwise, enzymes affect the overall chemical reaction very little. This gives enzymes the ability to completely reset after every reaction takes place, allowing one enzyme to process hundreds of thousands of reaction cycles. Now that we have covered how enzymes lower the activation energy in different kinds of reactions, let's see if you are paying attention. Pause the video now and take this short quiz. You can find answers to all the questions in this video through the quick test prep link in this video's description, as well as a number of other resources that can help you study for this topic in the AP Biology curriculum. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you found it helpful and informative and feel free to leave us any comments or questions you still have about how enzymes work to lower the activation energy required in a reaction. Be sure to subscribe to the Biology Dictionary YouTube channel to get quick access to all of our AP Biology videos and resources. Good luck!